Okay, lesson 5.2 is evaluating and graphing polynomial functions. So polynomial functions are just equations or expressions that are usually to some degree or exponent. So the first part is what is a polynomial function? And it's almost easier to think about what's not a polynomial function. So a polynomial function is an algebraic expression that is a sum of terms. Each term contains only variables with whole number exponents. So see how these are 2, 4, 3, 2, and that's a 1. Those are whole numbers. So whole numbers are 1, 2, 3, 4. They don't include 0. Da, 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 da. And real number coefficients. Okay, so no i's are involved there. So if you look at this part, it says what's not a polynomial? Well, this is not because x can't be inside a radical. That's considered x to the 1 half, and that's not a whole number um, exponent. This one, this is x to the negative 2. You can't have a negative exponent. x cannot be in the denominator because that's really x to the negative 1. So again, that does not fit into this definition. x cannot be an exponent. And the exponent cannot be a fraction. That's really the cube root of x. OK. The degree of a polynomial function is the highest exponent in the function. And the leading coefficient is the number being multiplied by the largest degree term. So here's some examples. We have three main types we're going to be looking at. A quadratic. All quadratics have its x to the second degree. And this particular one, so you look at the highest exponent in the function, its degree, its highest degree, or exponent is a 2, and the leading coefficient in front of that one is a 3. This is called a cubic function, because it's to the third power, it's cubed. All right, that's its highest exponent, and the leading coefficient for that one is 5. And then finally, a quartic polynomial function, so think there's four quarters in a dollar, or a quarter of an hour um, is 15 minutes, okay? So this is quartic because it's to the fourth degree, and the coefficient in front of that is a seven, so that's the leading coefficient. So let's look through these examples. All right, is this a polynomial? Yep, all of its exponents are whole numbers, so yes. What degree is it? Well, the highest exponent is a four. So that means, since it's got a fourth degree, it's quartic. And its leading coefficient is, that's just a 1. All right, this next one. Um, is it a polynomial? So let's look at all of our x's. Yep, they're all to um, a whole number power. Okay, And then this number in front of here is a real number. It's irrational. It's pi. Um, it doesn't repeat. It's a decimal that doesn't repeat, but it's a real number. So yes, it's a polynomial. It's second degree. That's its highest, highest exponent. And the type um, is quadratic. Anything to the second degree is quadratic. Its leading coefficient is whatever numbers um, your highest exponent is being multiplied by. So it's pi. Let's look at C. Is this a polynomial? Whoops, that is to a negative um, power, so no. For D, okay, again, we have x in the exponent, and if you look at our rules up here, x cannot be an exponent, so that's a no. Okay, and I'm going to let you figure out these remaining two. So let's move on to the back. Of page one, we're on page two. So our second example is evaluating by direct substitution. So um, direct substitution means if they give you the x value, you just plug it in anywhere you see x. So we're going to do f of three equals three squared plus two times three minus fifteen. So it's nine plus six minus fifteen. 15 minus 15 is 0. OK. I'm going to let you figure out that one on your own. Let's try this one. Evaluate when x is 3. So f of 3 is 2 times 3 to the fourth power minus 5 times 3 to the third 
minus 4 times 3 plus 8. So 3 to the fourth power um, is 3 times 3, which is 9, times 3 is 27, times 3 again is 81. So I have 2 times 81 minus 5 times 27 minus 12 plus 8. So I get 162 minus 135 minus 12 plus 8. So that's going to be 25, 27 minus 12 is 15 plus 8 is 23. Okay? And then I'll let you figure this one out. For example 3, it says to evaluate by dividing using the reverse tabular method. So there's a couple different ways we can look at this. All right, let's just do it this way first. Okay, if x equals 3, then our divisor is x minus that number. Okay, that's what we're going to divide by because when x equals 3, 3 minus 3 is 0. That should be um, one of our solutions. Okay, so the reverse tabular method. Some people got it, some people struggled. Okay, so here's how we do it. This is to the second power. This is what we're dividing. So we set up two columns on our table. And I'm going to go through multiple examples of this. So um, what we do now is this is like those multiplication charts. But what we have is we already have the answer. And we're figuring out, well, what was on the top? So we're dividing by x minus 3. And now we're figuring out what's on the top. So this square right here results in an x squared. Well, it's only one square, so it's got to be x squared, or one box. So x times what number up here will give me x squared? Well, x times x is x squared. So now I can go, oh, x times negative 3 is negative 3x. All right? Now, this diagonal adds up to get me this sum. Well, I want to end up with 2x, but I have negative 3x. So what do I have to have here so that when I add it to negative 3x, I get 2x? I need a 5x, because 5 minus 3 is 2. What did I multiply x by to get 5x? I multiplied it by positive 5. All right, so this is. Um, what we're really looking for is what is our remainder, if there is a remainder, and I'll show you that in just a minute. But right now, okay, how do I go from negative 15 to negative 15? I'm already there. So I have a remainder of 0. It divided out evenly. Okay. All right, so let's look at this. Compare your answer to part A in example 2. Well, part A in example 2, I got 0, and I also got 0 down here. So F of 3 equals 0, and then my remainder um, is 0 over x minus 3, because that's what I was dividing by. All right, I know this is confusing. Stick with me. I'm going to skip ahead to C on the other side, because we already found this answer, and that's going to affect us with part C on the other side. So let's look at C here. It says evaluate when x equals 3. So my divisor is going to be x minus 3. So I have a fourth degree polynomial. So my um, reverse tabular method, my table, will have four columns. I'm dividing by x minus 3. I'm going to end up with 2x to the fourth minus 5x cubed. Notice there's no x squared there. We have to have a placeholder for our x squared. Minus 4x plus 8. So I just took this problem up here and I put it at the ends down here. So now I'm going to start working backwards. Always start in the top left corner. So this single box here creates 2x to the fourth. 
So what do I multiply x by to get 2x to the fourth? Well, I must have multiplied it by 2x cubed. 2x cubed times x is 2x to the fourth. So now I can go, OK, well, 2x cubed times negative 3 is negative 6x cubed. All right. I have to end up with negative 5x cubed. I'm at negative 6. So how, what do I have to put up here to get these two added together to make negative 5x cubed? The right answer is 1x cubed. 1 minus 6 is negative 5. So repeat the process. What did I multiply x by to get x cubed? I multiplied it by x squared. x squared times negative 3 is negative 3x squared. Okay, now I've got this diagonal. I have to end up with 0x squared because there were no x squareds up in this original problem. I'm at negative 3. I need it to 0 out. So that's 3x squared. So what did I multiply x by to get 3x squared? I must have multiplied it by 3x. So 3x times x is 3x squared. 3x times negative 3 is negative 9x. This diagonal now. I'm at negative 4. I'm sorry, I have negative 9, but I want to end up with negative 4. So I have to add 5x. 5 minus 9 is negative 4. So I must have multiplied x by 5 to get positive 5x. Now I have 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. But that doesn't match with that 8 there. So that's what our remainder is. How do I go from negative 15 all the way to positive 8? So again, I like to think in terms of a number line. I want to end up at positive 8. I'm at negative 15. So I have to go up 15 just to get to 0, plus 8 more. So that means I had to go up 23. That's my remainder. Okay, so I have a remainder of 23. And if we look back on the previous page with that exact same problem, when we substituted 3 in for x, we also got 23. So that's, these numbers are the same. So f of 3 equals 23, and then the remainder is 23 over x minus 3. See those two numbers match. Okay. Um, okay, let's look on to E, solve by direct substitution. So let's look at our previous example. We divided by x minus 3. And that was when we did f of 3 equals 23. So if we're dividing by x minus 8, that means x equals 8. Okay, you just take whatever that number is. Okay, so now I just do, and this is what I'm substituting in. So f of x equals x squared minus 7x minus 11, but we're interested in f of 8. So f of 8 equals 64 minus 56 minus 11. Okay, and that becomes um, 8 minus 11 equals negative 3. So E2 says solve using the reverse tabular method. So again, I have a second degree polynomial function. So that means my table has two columns. I'm dividing by x minus 8. x squared minus 7x is the result of these diagonals. Minus 11 is the result of that diagonal. And I'm going to guess right now that I'm going to have a remainder of negative 3. Okay? So the only thing that can go in this box is an x squared, because that's the only way you can get x squared. So x times some number gives me x squared times x. 8 times, I'm sorry, x times negative 8 is negative 8x. So I have negative 8x. I need to end up with negative 7x. That means I must just have positive 1x. 1 minus 8 is negative 7. So x times 1 is um, x. And then 1 times negative 8 
is negative 8. Okay, how do I go from negative 8 down to negative 11? That's a drop of 3. Whoa, they're the same. So um, f of 8 equals negative 3, and then the remainder is negative 3 over x minus 8. Okay, so for this part right here, all I wanted you to do was to go to Desmos.com or Graphing Calculator and graph this function and then look at what value the graph is when x equals 3. Okay, so um, when I graph this into Desmos, Okay, what I'm going to see is a graph that looks something like this. Okay, so we're just sketching. And when x equals 3, that should actually probably be over a little bit. When x equals 3, 1, 2, 3, um, this equals 0. Oh, wait, is that right? Yeah, it should be equal to 0 should hit at the x-axis. Okay, so look, if you look at this um, function right here, okay, um, when you, this is the exact same one from here, so when f of x is 3, it should equal 0. Okay. So all you have to do for these, and some of them are going to be really funky looking, especially when you get into these things, but when you find out what, what its value is at these x's, oops, my lights just shut off, hold on, it should be the exact same thing that we've been getting all along on pages um, 2, 3, and 4, right? So this is long enough, here we go.